bracket, but it is all to play for here. I wonder if we're going to get another best of three here, Adam. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be the trend. I think it's going to be a close game. Both players, uh, obviously that experience from winners round number one, they're able to key off. They've learned a little bit about their teams in their previous losers round. We're looking at it from Ashton's point of view. And uh, this is going to be a familiar sight for anyone who's played mm. Alessio in this tournament. The Cinderace and Bishop lead. And I don't think an unfamiliar lead in Togekiss and Dragapult. Exactly, a really classic combination, Togekiss and Dragapult. You know, Togekiss able to redirect attacks away while Dragapult might go into its Dynamax form and start dealing out some really powerful max moves. But on the flip side, Alessio there with his very common lead there of Bishop and Cinderace. And once again, Cinderace can be in a good position here to go for something like a max airstream while pressuring that Dragapult with a Sucker Punch. In turn though, Togekiss can use its Follow Me to redirect that Sucker Punch and help Dragapult out so that it doesn't fall victim to something from Bishop. Yeah, that, that Togekiss helping out against the Bishop has been absolutely huge. And I think we saw it in uh, Alessio, also known as Yuri's, previous round, uh, where, you know, he managed to play around that quite well. And it does, of course, have Steel-type attacks, which cause some problems. Mm. Uh, nothing new here. It looks like Yuri wants to get off to a, a quite aggressive start, just Dynamaxing his Cinderace right away, able to take maximum <laughs> advantage of the Libero ability. Uh, and we'll see what Ashton does in response. Looks like Dynamax is going to be the play. So we're starting this game off with a bang. Yeah, definitely going straight on the offensive here for both of these trainers. Going to be Dynamaxing up the Togekiss, actually. So no redirection to protect that Dragapult. I wouldn't be surprised to see it maybe go uh, for something like a Protect and just try and... Um, sort of play defensively a little bit here to preserve itself, but no Sucker Punch. Instead, Cinderace is going to go for um, Max Airstream, so going to get the speed up on Alessio's side of the field, and targeting straight down into that Dragon Ball, takes it down to only 12 hit points, very nearly picking up the one hit KO, and of course getting those crucial boosts while turning itself into the flying type there, so we'll be levitating up off the ground for now. Bishop following up though with an Assurance. That's going to easily Ooh. pick up the KO there, Adam. Yeah, I really love that play. Using the boost from the Max Air Stream, you know you're going first because you're a Cinderace, and just immediately returning around and saying, hey, I've got a speed boost, and I'm just going to take advantage of that with Assurance. One of these really nice combinations that Cinderace and Bishop can do. The Max Starfall in Retaliation, you know, really nice damage down onto this Togekiss, but it's not enough to get the knockout on Bishop, and now there's an immediate Pokemon advantage in Alessio's favor. He gets to see a little bit more of Ashton's team, and with that knowledge he's going to get, may be able to play around that with the typing he's going to choose when it comes to mm. using the Cinderace's Libero ability. Exactly. Seeing Ashton there opt to bring in the extra drill as well, a Pokemon that we've seen him time after time click that Earthquake button. If you're the flying type, uh, thanks to Libero, then you're not going to have to worry about those at all. And Bishop, yeah, it will be KO'd by one easily enough, but it's still in a position where it can deal some good damage with something like a Sucker Punch. And we all know that Yuri does not mind losing a Pokemon, so he can go for Mode B in the back as well. Uh, but he needs to make sure that he is using these max moves, uh, max turns at, to his full advantage. Yeah, I think it's interesting watching the Togekiss looking at its max moves, and it's got uh, three max guards and a max starfall, so <laughs> not too many options there. Uh, mm. We are going to see, you know, the Exeter taking a lot of damage right here off that Cinderace. Not very effective, still did, like, over half of its health uh, with the max strike, getting those speed drops as well. That's certainly going to help out in the follow-up to this turn. The Bishop, once again, knows it's going to be moving first. The Assurance mm -hmm. picks up the knockout on Exeter. That's two Assurance knockout for Bishops. Really nice combinations between the Cinderace changing speeds and the Bishop capitalizing off that with Assurances. Yeah, and I think it's a good observation there as well, Adam, that this Togekiss can only go for Max Starfall as its only offensive Max move. And as these players have had some insight to the moves that their opponent will be bringing to the match, that's something that Yuri is going to be aware of. So he doesn't have to fear any Max Airstreams coming out. He knows that he's going to be able to get the speed advantage when it comes to piloting those. Um, so he doesn't have to worry too much in that sense. Tyranitar, though, joining the field. I think you said we haven't seen it yet. It's now here, ready for action, and is going to bring the sand onto the field as well. Yeah, the sand, I mean, doing a little bit of residual damage certainly can be annoying, but it's really up against it, right? Four Pokemon are left for Alessio, able to just start targeting stuff down with exactly what he needs. Uh, he's going to have access to, to super effective moves, I, I think, across the board. We see one coming through right there. Cinderace changes to the fighting type and lands uh, a Max Knuckle. Looks like it's going to be going towards Tyranitar, and uh, I don't think there's much doubt that uh, it gets a knockout. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's going to really, really hurt. And, you know, no <laughs> focus ash or anything there as well to keep Tyranitar on the field. That's going to make sure Tyranitar leaves the field pretty much as speedily as it joined, leaving Togekiss on its own to face up against the rest of Alessio's team. Bishop going to go for an Iron Head, do a huge amount of damage, and particularly when the Dynamax turns are over, that is going to be hitting even stronger. Um, Max Starfall going into the Cinderace, so Ashton is able to pick up a KO against Alessio here, but he's got two Pokemon in the back, and as we saw from the Iron Head as well, once it goes back to its normal form, Togekiss will not be able to withstand another one of those attacks. So, really good offensive play here from Alessio, able to use his Libero turns really well to make sure that his typings are at optimum advantage to be able to pick up clean KOs. And I think as well, Ashton Dynamaxing his Togekiss may not have been the best idea when you consider how limited it is with the max moves it can choose. Well, I think that turn is exactly what he wanted, maybe a turn earlier. The max star fall towards the Cinderace after it goes to the fighting type with Libero. Probably what he was looking for before. Of course, he then decided to, to max strike and assurance instead, and that caused mm. some problems. Uh, a lot being asked of the Togekiss right now. Uh, Dazzle and Gleam. It's, mm -hmm. Don't forget the Togekiss has uh, lost some speed as well to the earlier uh, max strike and that max, uh, <laughs> max airstream max from turn airstream. one is still mm -hmm. in play. Yeah, so... Uh, a lot being asked right now of this Togekiss. It looks like, you know, a really confident start from Alessio, uh, able to put Ashton on the back foot. Does get to bring his Primarina in, which, yeah, Togekiss really doesn't have an answer to, if we're honest. Yeah, Ashton just using all the time there possible as thinking time more than anything. Think how he's going to adjust going into this game too. Um, Bishop there cleanly picks up the coat with an Iron Head, and Yuri gets a very quick advantage in this set. So... Really, again, we keep saying this in the Salusis bracket, there's so much to play for. You really can't afford another loss. You're out of the competition. And Yuri is doing everything he can at the moment to stay in. But Ashton, he's got so much versatility on that team. It's very solid, very consistent. And he's got a few different modes that he could bring against what Yuri has been using in terms of it's a very standard lead to predict from him. So maybe there's a different lead that Ashton could bring out for game two. Yeah, and I think what Ashton's going to have to look for in game number two is a way to play and control the speed a little bit better. It definitely felt mm. like that was something that Yuri was able to capitalize off and was always in charge, right? Being able to get the boost from, uh, you know, the Max Airstream turn one, then he got the Assurance knockout. Then in turn mm -hmm. two, he got the boost, or he got the drop rather, which, you know, works out kind of the same way from the Max Strike. And then he got the Assurance knockout. And that's something that Ashton can't let happen in game number two if he wants to mm -hmm. stay in the tournament. He's either got to keep up or, or shut it down, uh, but he's got to do something about it. You can't let the Bishop land Assurance after Assurance. Exactly. You need a way to be able to pick up some KOs off your own against Yuri's team. And I think in game two, I, I think I'd like to see Ashton use his Togekiss in that little bit more of a supportive role. We've seen the utility it has with Yawn, Follow Me, Helping Hand as well to deal out some big damage and maybe going for that Togekiss Excadrill lead that we've seen him use so many times before and to apply some damage with um, maybe sort of a Max Quake going into that Bishop, just trying to remove it from the field as quickly as possible could be what he needs. But again, you have to play around that focus, Sash. Yeah, and I see why here, obviously, Dynamax is the token kiss. He needs it to take hits. He wants it to take Iron Heads and, you know, mm. potential Max Flares from the, the Cinderace. But the problem is, is, you know, he just kind of left it alone for a couple turns. And that Pokemon advantage was, was too hard to claw back from. I think Dynamaxing something else on the team could be more valuable. You know, obviously, you can only Max Starfall, which didn't even get the knockout on Bisharp, uh, which mm. is something he really needed to do. And I think now he knows that. He's limit tested that. And he goes, all right, can't get the knockout there. Let's switch it up a little bit. You know, it doesn't have Max Airstream available on Togekiss, which, you know, in previous kind of tournaments, we've seen that. Uh, and being mm. able to fall behind that pace, yeah, the, the Dynamax has to go somewhere else in game number two. Exactly. Well, armed with these new calculations on the damage output, I wonder in game two if there are going to be dramatic changes to the lead and the full Pokemon setup. So it'll be interesting to see that in action as soon as the players lead out with those Pokemon, whether the game state will change. And I wonder if Yuri's going to bring Cinderace and Bishop again. Uh, well, we're about to find out, and the answer <laughs> is a resounding yes. Uh, yeah. It, interestingly, though, Bishop this time gets a defiant boost, which is something we've not seen uh, Alessio's Ooh. Bishop get that many times. The Incineroar came in and just handed that boost right on over. Uh, that means the Dragapult's going to struggle to attack for fear of just being sucker punched. Yeah, this is certainly a risky lead here from Ashton, but it can potentially have high reward. You can go for something like the Fake Out, um... 
I will go straight on the offensive, go for something um, like the Flare Blitz into that Bishop and try and remove it as quickly as possible. Um, but again, like you've said, that Dragapult is sitting in a really dangerous position. Um, if it's not able to attack and maybe get up a max airstream of his own, then Cinderace is going to be free to go for that and once again get the speed on Yuri's side. And that's exactly what he did in game one to enable him to start sweeping through Ashton's team. No switches straight away, but Dynamax coming out from Yuri. Yep, I mean, Yuri's got, got to go for it. I think he's got to get damage down as quickly as Alessio did to him in game number one. I do like the fact that, you know, Ashton has fake out, but it comes at such a high cost, uh, having to give that Defiant boost over to Bishop. That could potentially hurt him, or, you know, if Ashton can capitalize on it, uh, put him in a great position. We see the double Dynamax once again on turn one, but this time the more offensive Dragapult getting the Dynamax on Ashton's side, and I like that a whole lot more for this game. Yeah, I like that, particularly if maybe the Dragapult wants to go for something. If it's supported by the Fake Out and then it can go for some really big offensive pressure into that Cinderace or go for the Max Airstream, that can put it in a really good position. Of course, it can also go for something like the Max Guard in the following turn while Incineroar is able to clean up against that Bishop. But the Fake Out does go straight into the Bishop, breaking that Focus Sash as Cinderace goes for that Max Airstream, getting the speed straight away onto Alessio's side of the field, wanting to make sure that that is set up for itself and Bishop going into that next turn, targeting into the Dragapult and doing a really decent chunk of damage with these Dynamax Pokemon. Every single hit point counts. You want to try and whittle away at them as best as you can. Dragapult going to retaliate with his own Max Airstream, kind of forced to do this to stop Alessio from getting the advantage constantly, but again, can deal a little bit of damage back in return. But thanks to um, Libero making the, fairy um, the flying type on that side of the field as well, it's going to reduce the damage output. But I like that, and I think that's something, you know, we talked about between the games that, hey, you know, Ashton was behind the pace in that speed control. Being able to access mm. his own Max Airstream very much keeps him in the game uh, and able to do exactly what he needs to do. He now has an interesting decision to make, though, is how does he work around the Bishop? He managed to buy a turn with the Fake Out, and there was really nothing that, you know, mm. Alessio could do about that. He had to take the Fake Out, and the Fake Out had to go there. We haven't seen the Bishop Dynamaxing at all. Now he's just got to make sure he can take a Sucker Punch, uh, if that's what's coming through. And whatever Cinderace decides to follow up with uh, this turn, I think could be very important in how the game plays out, as Bishop just protects itself. Yeah, just to protect that straight away from the Bishop. No protect, though, from that Dragapult. Uh, Max Airstream going into that Incineroar doing over 50%. So again, boosting up the speed on Alessio's side of the field. And unless Ashton matches that with a Max Airstream of his own, then Yuri is going to have the advantage going forward. But it is indeed going to be the match. So I think that's quite sensible here from Ashton. Just chipping away at this Cinderace. I think potentially the third Max move there, if it goes into that slot as well, will be able to pick up the KO. Um, and Incineroar now is unfortunately going to be unable to KO that Bishop thanks to the Protect, which I think is quite wise. It allows Bishop to now pressure that Dragapult going into this next turn again. Yeah, and I, I think what was what was happening there is, you know, it looks weird to leave the Bishop, but I think what, you know, Yuri was expecting from Ashton was Dragapult to max guard on that turn, and then he'd mm. be able to pick up the knockout. He's not done that. The Bishop kind of protected. Yeah, it kept itself around, but it missed that opportunity to grab the big knockout. So he's just got to make that call and sucker punch at the right time. And, you know, obviously, Sucker Punch is a little bit telegraphed on Bishop. It's no surprise mm. that it has it, and it's going to be doing so much damage after the Defiant boost, but he's just so kind of cautious about using it and failing it. Ooh, goes for the Sucker Punch on this occasion. Ooh. Doesn't actually manage to pick up the KO. Dragapult able to hang on and actually gets the Weakness Policy boost as well. I mean, that turned out like the opportune moment to go for that Max Guard, but Ashton did not go for it. Um, the Max Airstream doesn't double up either. It goes straight into that Incineroar, protecting the Bishop even further from that Flare Blitz and allowing the speed to be up three stages on Alessio's side as well. But what is this Dragapult going to be going for? Weakness Policy Booster is going to be so strong and it goes for another Max Airstream. So it's a level playing field when it comes to the speeds, except for the Pokemon that switches in um, in replacement of that Incineroar. But Cinderace has been KO'd by that. What a powerful move there by Dragapult, able to survive. Yeah, being able to take that Sucker Punch is absolutely huge. Not falling down to it, it clinging on with, I think it's nine health. Yeah. Uh, being able, yeah, there it is, nine health confirmed on the screen for you there. Uh, but being able to fire back and, and most importantly, keep matching that consistent speed boosting that we're getting from these max airstreams. They might not be the most effective attacks. They're kind mm. of just slowly wearing each other down with them. But Ashton has kept up and that is very important. 
Yeah, Ashton here having a bit of indecision about whether to bring in his Togekiss or Exodrill. Togekiss could be a good option because you can use that redirection to prevent Sucker Punch. But again, Exodrill can deal out some big offensive pressure. And that's really what Ashton needs to do. Because that Defiant Boost is still up on that Bishop. He needs to be able to remove it from the field. And Cineral was unable to do it. And it only really has its Focus Sash damage um, from that fake out so you need to be able to hit it with something hard like an earthquake to be able to pick up the ko as alessio also brings in dust blobs i've got a feeling i know what's coming here adam yeah i mean we've seen alessio try and play this end game but ashton actually has some really interesting options don't forget the dragapult has the weakness policy boost so it's going to be doing a lot more damage than the many dragapults uh ashton has a way to kind of protect it from this earthquake that he's hovering and mulling over and we know about Trick Room. We know how much Yuri loves to kind of end games with Trick Room and Pre Marina. So uh, this could be a really interesting turn, uh, depending on how he decides to play it. Uh, not what I thought I was going to see on this turn, as we saw on Ashton's side. Dragapult leaving the field. Uh, Togekiss coming into play, but obviously just trying to avoid that sucker punch. Yeah, but no Sucker Punch Ooh. coming out from the Bishop. Instead, it's going to be an Iron Head directly into that Excadrill. Maybe thinking that was the slot Tokus was going to come in, or just trying to go for some big offensive damage. And thanks to the boost, it actually does quite a chunk, as Swords Dance does go out from that Excadrill. One thing Ashton is very good at is identifying when he can't stop Trick Room, let's get myself in the best position I can be to deal out some damage, and the Swords Dance boost will help him out here. Yeah, I mean, he's been really good at that, and we've seen it a couple of times. He's played against Trick Room from a Dusclops. This is now the third time in a row. It would be the fourth. <laughs> uh, you know, they played in round one. So Ashton's played against this every round. He lost to it in round one with obviously a very different team, but he now understands these endgame conditions with Dusclops and should be able to start firing back. I mean, Swords Dance, uh, Earthquake next to Togekiss probably feels uh, pretty good. And it looks like Ashton's going to just try and start working through this Trick Room, maybe to get his Dragapult back in right at the end of the game when the Bishop's gone to kind of tidy up that game. Yeah, Dustblops here, gonna start chipping away at the Togekiss by going for a night stage, removing 50 HP. As Togekiss goes for Yawn, so gonna start trying to shut down that Dustblops. Of course, all those max airstream boosts affecting that Bishop greatly is gonna be moving last in this scenario, meaning it's gonna have to take this Earthquake from the Exit Drill. It's a nice clean KO, but look at the bulkiness of that Dustblops. It's able to hang on um, and just puts itself into a really great position going forward. The only thing is, of course, Yuri can no longer switch it out. It's going to be going to sleep. Yeah, I mean, now it's down to the last two. Uh, it's going to be going to sleep. And these Yawn plays could become really troublesome. This Pre-Marina can't Dynamax, uh, so its damage output is a little bit limited here. Uh, you know, and if this extra can maybe, you know, buy a turn or two, let the Pre-Marina go to sleep, you know, uh, that could be really, really nasty uh, for something like... Uh, Alessio's team, which is just relying on these two. This Togekiss is, is going to be difficult to knock out. Let's, you know, make no bones about it. It's not the easiest Pokemon to take down, even without Dynamaxing. And these Yawns could really ruin that end game that Alessio loves to set up. I really like this play here by Ashton going for the Protect. It stops the Dustlop from going anything like a Will-O-Wisp or Nightshade into it. Just keeps it on the field, allowing Dustlops to go to sleep. So it doesn't have to worry about that. Pre-Marina going for a Moonblast, which has doubled up into that Togekiss that had to first take the Nightshade, Ooh. but it's able to hang on. Its special attack, though, is, however, dropped. That's going to really go against its Dazzling Gleams. It's only offensive move. But I really think the secret here for Togekiss is to be going for these yawns, like you said there, Adam. Dustlops takes a nap, and Primary will be doing the same on the next turn. Yeah, and I love that. You know, such a good call by Yuri to say, you know what, I know uh, that you're going to double in, you know, to this. But I, I think I can take it and, and go to sleep, you know. He he tries to get the knockout on Togekiss, knows that the extra is going to protect. Falling short, though, could be pretty problematic as we come to the end of the game. Ashton knows he has to kind of wait another turn for the Primarina to fall asleep. Putting his Dragapult in play, uh, you know, does have options to kind of hide and avoid maybe a little bit of damage coming out. Uh, but this turn, that's a double knockout. That Hyper Voice just able to uh, wrap up both knockouts on Togekiss and Dragapult. So everything relies on Excadrill versus two sleeping Pokemon in Trick Room. Yeah.
Ashton's playing a slightly dangerous game here because, I mean, I I really like the way you switched it and preserved that extra drill for one more time because extra drill is going to be the key to winning this game. It's the one that can really deal the big offensive pressure. So by burning an Alessandra Trick Room by bringing in that Dragapult means extra drill's back in play, but he needs that Dusclops to stay asleep. If Dusclops is able to wake up, it doesn't manage to stay asleep, so extra drill is going to be free to go for some damage. Primarina has to sleep in this particular turn as it goes for that Earthquake. So going to deal a chunk of damage to both these Pokemon. It doesn't have the Sword Stance boost though, so it's not going to be able to deal as much as it would like, but Trick Room is now over. Yeah, he's going to need, I think, two more turns. Uh, he can afford maybe the Dusclops waking up now, uh, but not the Primarina. It's going to be a mm. lot of damage. One more will do it. We'll see the sleep. Oh, Primarina's Berry coming into play. Could make this dicey. Yeah, it certainly could, and it's going to be interesting to see which Pokemon may stay awake. Primarina is still taking a nap, and so is Dusclops. That is exactly what Ashton needs to be seeing. He needs to be starting to whittle away through these Pokemon. We know this Earthquake will pick up the KO against Dusclops, but I do wonder if that berry might affect the Primarina. Yeah, it's going to be close. This is going to decide if we go to a game three or not. Earthquake landing on both, obviously, oh. and there it is. The double knockout. Ashton Cox ties up the set one to one. And uh, yeah, loser's bracket Ooh. doesn't disappoint. Best of threes no. every single time, Lou. Yeah, I mean, that was really intense there from Ashton. Like, it was not a set win condition for him there at all. He needed the Pokemon to stay asleep and he needed Excadrill to survive till Trick Room was, you know, null and void. And that's where switching in that Dragapult, I think, was a really amazing turn for him. Sacked it off, burnt a turn, brought in the Excadrill, and just had to keep his fingers crossed that the Pokemon stayed asleep and they did. So, amazing play there from Ashton to be able to really identify his win condition and also be able to go for it so successfully. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a risky one, right? It's put both of them to sleep, hope they stay asleep long enough that I can deal <laughs> the requisite damage to get the knockouts and uh, win the game. If the mm. Primarina wakes up, you know, first turn after its required turn of sleep, then it's over. If Duskops wakes up and starts to Will-O-Wisp, that kind of buys him a lot of time. But mm. as you mentioned, Ashton knew what he had to do. The only way he could win that match was by both of them being asleep. He played around it perfectly, said, you know what, I'll get the yawns down. It was very frustrating that it took a turn for them to come into play and that Primarina picked up that double knockout but hey he put himself in the winning position the only way he could win things went his way and things stayed asleep and, and he ties up this set uh, bringing us to game three once again uh, we're, we're going the distance no one wants to get knocked <laughs> out uh, in this bracket Exactly. Every single game we can show you in the loser's bracket, we are doing our best to. And I think Ashton really did so well in that game too, to play better at the speed game against Yuri, able to match those max airstreams and just kept him in the game long enough to be able to play out that winning strategy. But game three is always an interesting one. So let's not wait any longer and jump right into it so we can see exactly which one of these players is going to be staying in the competition and which one is unfortunately going to be knocked out. No surprises from anyone here. Yuri is leading with Cinderace <laughs> and the Bishop once again. I mean, it is such a solid strategy for him. And it looks like Ashton is going for, again, something he did very well in game two. He got the Incineroar and the Dragapult. So once again, risking everything with giving the Defiant boost to the Bishop, but can still apply pressure with those Flare Blitzers. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of worked out, right? He knew about the threat of it. I think he got in, in Yuri's head a little bit there with the I'll protect if you sucker punch me. And actually, you know, Ashton was just able to, to weave in those airstreams and keep up. So I wonder if Yuri's going to take that knowledge that he got in game number two and, and maybe call that bluff a little bit earlier. Maybe try and sack it off and say, hey, yeah, no, you, you will get me with Flare Blitz, but at least I'll sucker punch you before you do that. Uh, so I'll be curious to see just how much damage he can get down early on. Of course, he has to watch out for the fake out in turn one. There's no way around that, really. It's that, That's what happens mm -hmm. when you bring an Incineroar. Uh, but, you know, at least he can start matching the max airstreams and not have a repeat of, of game number one where, yeah, it didn't, didn't really keep up and, and was just behind the pace for so much of the game. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be a rerun of turn one in game two. Uh, Cinderella's going to Dynamax and so is the Dragapult on Ashton's side. So very likely we're going to see that fake out go into the Bishop and then max airstreams apiece. Um, but we did see in game two, that is exactly what these players need to do. They need to be getting the speed advantage up on their side. There's nothing that Yuri can do to bypass the fake out. And the one benefit of fake out is it doesn't do too much damage. Yes, it breaks the focus ash, but it doesn't do too much damage at all. So you won't be KO'd in that turn and you won't even have your focus ash broken if you go for protect. Um, so Yuri remembering exactly what Ashton did in game two, protecting against it as the Cinderace goes for the max airstream. So wants to boost up the side on Alessio's side. Um, and I feel like it's exactly what Ashton's clicked in as well. 
yeah, I mean, I think that's a fantastic play. It's just saying, you know what, I needed my focus sash to deal with the flare blitz. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep that one uh, nice and safe. Cinderace getting good damage down on that Incineroar, uh, actually bringing it to exactly half, I think, and, and taking the airstream, the max airstream, from this Dragapult pretty well, I'd say. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Able to take that as the speed boosts up on Ashton's side. And again, we've got this situation we had in game two. Incineroar's taking a huge amount of damage. It's not going to be able to survive another one of those max airstreams. So it looks like Cinderace has really done an excellent job of protecting Bishop. It's got its focus sash still intact. Cinderace is going to be able to pick up a KO against that Incineroar. So this could be the position where Ashton maybe needs to play defensively and switch up his ball position a little bit. Yeah, we'll see uh, Ashton definitely taking his time on this one, mulling over exactly what he wants to do, how he wants to play out this turn. It looks like we're going to get some uh, some changes, but he's he's definitely looking like he's a little bit scared of falling behind on mm. those turns. He also has to be wary, of course, of changing the stats. I mean, back, Max Airstream is going to boost his speed, and that's not going to interact with the Defiant on Bisharp, which is certainly an interesting mind game to play. Uh, Cinderace knows what it needs to do. It needs to keep the Max Airstream pressure up throwing that towards the Togekiss here. Yeah, Togekiss able to take that much better than the Incineroar would, and I think it's a very interesting observation there, Adam, that he needs to make sure, if you're Ashton, that you're targeting the right Pokemon with these max airstreams, so you're not giving the Bishop an extra Defiant boost, but the max airstream is indeed um, going into that slot there. I think as well, the other interesting thing with the Incineroar is you want to switch it out there so it doesn't get KO'd. You're scared to switch it back in because you don't want to give another Ooh. Defiant Boost to the Bishop. But Togekiss switching in there, unfortunately, going to leave the field before it's able to do anything as Alessio has doubled up into that slot. So really great play there by um, Alessio, just making sure that if there was a switch there, he's able to pick up the KO. And if not, that Iron Head would have redirected um, into the Dragapult for some good damage. Yeah, that's a fantastic turn, just saying, hey, I think you're going to get Incineroar off the field. I think, you know, the, the turn one wasn't great for it, uh, so I'm going to call it, you know. And even if you bought an Excadrill there, that was still going to lose its Focus Sash mm. to, to something like the, you know, the Iron Head and take a lot of damage. It is really tough now. He's got Excadrill and Incineroar. Does he want to give another Defiant boost over? Looks like the answer might be yes, but now those, those <laughs> Sucker Punches, I think, are confirmed knockouts on yeah, this Dragapult. So They're going to be powerful, He's going to have... <laughs> Yeah, he's going to have to protect around another fake out. I, I understand that. Uh, but, you know, we could just exchange Max Airstreams again. Exactly. I wouldn't be surprised to see Max Airstream coming out again just to try and keep the playing field level. Um, it's still very likely to go for the fake out into that Bishop, but we know that it can just protect. And then Ashton still isn't really any far forward than he would be on that turn. Um, just a masterful play there by Yuri, just making sure to double up into that slot. Ashton now doesn't have his redirectional Pokemon as well for later in the game, and he won't be able to go for that strategy with the Yawn that he did in game two. Um, so it really does limit Ashton to how he's going to be able to play out this end game. And while Yuri is able to apply a lot of the offensive pressure, it forces Ashton on the back foot to make loads of different switches. So the pressure's on him here to be able to work around this sucker punch. Yep. And also, I think what's interesting uh, about the damage outputs is that Dragapult's not getting the same type of attack bonus from. You know, of course, it's max airstreams. Cinderace changing it up, saying, you know what? I don't want to deal with these speed boosts anymore. I'm going to kind of <laughs> let you get a little bit ahead. Uh, landing mm. a max knuckle on Incineroar. And hey, that, that's a knockout. That's uh, no real doubt there. Yeah, again, a really great call there by Yuri because if the Incineroar stays in, goes for Fake Out, you pick up the KO anyway. If it switches for maybe the Excadrill um, or Tyranitar in the back, it's going to be able to pick up the KO. So really great call there. Doesn't really need the max airstreams. Um, Cinderace will be KO, but most likely Yuri does have that Prima Arena and Dusclops in the back. So max airstreams really not going to matter for him going forward. He just wants to get those KOs so he can start sealing up the game. And with Cinderace being KO'd now, it gives him the perfect opportunity to bring that Dusclops back into play. Yeah, and I mean, the big thing here is, yes, he's lost out kind of the speed race uh, in that he's only got two max airstreams on his bishop, whereas this Dragapult has three max airstreams behind it, keeping it going very, very fast. But there's still Sucker Punch, and, and Sucker Punch really doesn't <laughs> care about what speed you are. It says, if you want to attack me, that's great. Um, I'm just going to go right ahead. It's got two boosts instead of the one it had in the previous game. And on top of that, the Dragapult is no longer Dynamax. So its health is, is a little bit lower. And uh, it's going to force some interesting plays out of Ashton in, in how he decides to go around this turn. 
Yeah, going for Dragon Dance here is really sensible. The status move means it would not be affected by Sucker Punch if that's what Alessio had gone for, but I did not see a Sucker Punch. Instead, it's going to be the Iron Head going into the Exit Drill. Huge Oof. amount of damage there for a not very effective Ooh. move. And it also gets the flinch, allowing Dusclops to set up the Trick Room. I mean, Exit Drill really was the only Pokemon there that could deal with that Bishar, maybe going for something like an Earthquake, um, just to try and remove it from play. But Dusclops setting up the Trick Room. We know what's going to happen here going forward, Adam. Yeah, I mean, the Trick Room set up, he's locking himself in the Sucker Punch so he doesn't have to worry about speed, and uh, yeah, I mean, that Dragapult can't do anything. Uh, that flinch is absolutely huge because it meant the Bishop is still in play. Excadrill doesn't have enough to take the Nightshade, and uh, Alessio Yuri Bischetto keeping his run going in the loser's bracket. Uh, some really good plays in 